Uh, everybody, uh, tonight's video is going to be on angles. We're going to talk about how to define them, what the notation is that we use for them, and also some special types of angles and how we classify them. So first of all, angles are measured in degrees and they're made up of three parts. They have two sides and a vertex. The sides of an angle are called rays, and the point where the rays meet is the point that's called a vertex. Rays are kind of like line segments and lines combined, meaning that they have one end that has an end point and another end that extends forever marked with an arrow. So we're used to seeing that in some of our notation. So if I have a ray, it has an end point, and then the other end of it is an arrow, like that. Now if I have two rays that share an end point, and they go off in uh, different directions, that makes an angle. So here are my sides. Each side, each ray is a side, and then the point where they meet is the vertex. So I'm going to call this the vertex, so you can see that right there. That's the vertex, and then each one of these is a side of the angle. So I'll call that a side. We'll call this a side right here. So you can see those are the three parts that we mentioned make up an angle. So we also measure angles in terms of degrees. And when we think of uh, degrees, we're thinking of them as parts of a circle. And a circle is made up of 360 degrees. So most of the angle measures that we're going to deal with for now are going to be between 0 and 360. So we're going to measure what's inside from side to side in terms of the angle measure here. You could also eventually what we're going to talk about is this other outside angle, right? And together that would make a circle. And so together that's where we get the 360 degrees. So that's why if I made a circle, that would be 360 degrees total. And so when we're looking at angles and their measure, we're thinking what part of that circle is being taken up. So if I'm thinking of uh, the measure of this angle, I'm thinking of how much of that complete circle is being uh, taken up from side to side. Okay. When we are uh, talking about the notation for different angles, again, here we have a couple of rays that meet at a common endpoint that make up an angle. When you're just, uh, let's give these points, let's give some points on here. Um, we'll call this D, C, and E. Okay, so if I'm looking at this angle, it's made up of a few parts. Um, the vertex is a point, so the vertex is going to be C, right? It's the point where these two rays meet. Now the sides, of the angle, those are rays. And so we said rays are kind of like um, a mix between a line segment and a line. So when I write out a ray using notation, I'm going to write out the two points, the end point, and then another point that's on the ray. And I'm going to have it, uh, the arrow is only going to be on the side with the letter. Uh, that's on the, the side with the arrow, right? So there shouldn't be an arrow over the C because the C is the end point. So the sides here are CD and CE. So when I write the ray, it's like a mix of a line and a line segment. Remember, a line segment doesn't have anything on the ends of the line above the two letters, but a line would have an arrow on both ends. So a ray is a mixture. It's going to have nothing on the side where the end point is, and an arrow over the letter where the ray extends on. So these are the three parts that make up the angle, the vertex and then the two rays. Each ray has the C in it, the common end point. And so together, they make an angle. And the angle notation is you make kind of like a little open angle looking uh, symbol. And then you're going to use the three letters that you've uh, discovered by looking at the sides and the vertex. It's important that the vertex always goes in the middle, just like it's important that the C 
it goes on the end of the ray with the end point with no arrow. So I could call this angle DCE or I could call this angle ECD, right? Because as long as I have the vertex in the middle, which is C, it doesn't matter which way I'm reading this angle, either from this side DCE or from this side ECD. You might also see a number in here to delineate, like if there's a diagram with a bunch of angles in it, you might see just a number right there. So another name for this would be angle two. What's important though is that you don't confuse that with angle measure when there's a degree symbol. If there was a degree right next to the two, then that's two degrees. That's not the name of the angle. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but just make sure that if you're going to call something angle two or angle whatever the number is here, make sure you're not confusing that for the degree or the measure of the angle. Another thing that we talk about uh, with angles is different points that are either interior or exterior. So if I have a point that's like inside this angle, this is called an interior point. So A is an interior point. So that means it's kind of like inside, it's between these two uh, rays. If the angle were to like close shut, it would sweep through and um, it would, if you think of this as the alligator from like greater than or less than stuff when you were a little kid, it would have, it would eat the A, right? So this would close and it would eat that point A. If I put something outside here, we'll call this point B, we would call that an exterior point. So it's outside of the angle. So if the angle were to close shut, it wouldn't hit uh, point B at all. So we wouldn't worry about that. So that's what we got a couple points, an interior point, an exterior point. We won't work with those too, too much. Um, but if we do have an angle like this, we're going to name it using either the three points that we see on the angle with the vertex in the middle always. So either DCE or ECD as long as C is in the middle because it's the vertex. Or I might see that um, number right here and I could call this angle two. And the other way um, that you could call this if you're like maybe writing it in a sentence, you would call this angle DCE. So you could replace the little angle symbol with the actual word angle, right? So those are your other options for naming uh, an angle when you're working with this in either your homework or examples in class. Another diagram I want to show you here is we can have a bunch of different angles together. Okay, so this is where it's important to like name the different angles, um, either using numbers um, or the, just making sure we have all the, the letters correct. So if I have, let's call this L, call this point here M, call this N, put a point here, call that P, here will be Q, and then we'll call this angle one, two, Three. So now I can refer to all of these different angles in different ways. I could call this angle 2, or I could call it PMQ, call this NMQ, LMQ, right? Could be a bigger angle here. So there's all kinds of different ways that we can name these and different angles that are in this picture. Um, one thing, another thing that we talked to, uh, want to talk about is opposite rays. And in this case, these are two rays that share a common endpoint but then go off in exactly the opposite direction. So ray LM, which you could write like that, remember the arrow is over the L, and MN are opposite rays. So they share a common endpoint like an angle. This is a 180 degree angle. And ML or LM goes off in the direction of the left and MN goes off to the right. So those are what we would call opposite rays. So we're going to do a couple examples like this in class where we look at a diagram like this and try to identify different angles by different names. So for example, angle 3 
is the same thing as saying angle NMQ. And so I might ask you, like, what's another name for NMQ? And you would say angle 3. So that's an example of that. When we're measuring angles, uh, we're going to use a tool called a protractor. So this is an example of a protractor. And when we're working with this, we always want one side of our angle to be on the base, right? We want it right on the bottom of the protractor because that lines up with zero degrees. Then what will happen is another side of the angle will be somewhere else along the protractor. So as long as I have one side on the, on the base, and then I'm going to look that where on the edge of the protractor the other side terminates, or where, what does it run into, what angle measure does it run into in terms of degrees. And in this case, we are at 27 degrees, right? So the angle is open uh, from 0 to 27 degrees, and so that's the angle that I have there. That's the measure of this angle. So uh, if we're looking at this, we would just be, we would have the vertex at the center, right in the middle of the protractor, side on the base, and then the other side is somewhere along the edge of the protractor. And this protractor is half a circle. It's easier to deal with. That way we have a flat edge. But again, we're still thinking of these as pieces of an entire circle. So this is, of the 360 degrees, 27 of them are inside this angle here. And so we can have angles of pretty much any size between 0 and 360, like we mentioned. This is another one. It's a little bit bigger. This is 126 degrees. Okay, so it's from this side to this side. And so when we're thinking about angles, their measurements are actually very important. And they're important in terms of how we classify them. Um, so if we're going to classify angles, we have a few that we like to work with. We have right angles. Those are angles whose measure is 90 degrees. I should write in the degree symbol there. An acute angle is an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees. And then an obtuse angle is an angle whose measure is between 90 and 180 degrees. So when we're working with different degrees, we're going to, or different angles rather, we want to identify them as either obtuse, acute, or right angles. So if we have, let's get our protractor back. If I have this angle here, it's 46 degrees. So that means it's going to be an acute angle, right? Because it's 46 degrees, which is less than 90 degrees, right? So any angle that's less than 90 degrees is acute. If I have a right angle, which is 90 degrees, it's easy to identify. It makes a nice sharp corner. It's like the corner of like a desk uh, or a wall meeting the floor or something uh, where it's a nice sharp corner, edge of a box, 90 degrees. You might also see this identified with like a little box on the inside. That's another way to note. Uh, notify that it's 90 degrees, 90 degree angle. And then anything that's bigger than that or open wider is another way you can think of that is going to be obtuse. So let's move this down a little bit. So 121 degrees, that's between 90 and 180. So that's going to be an obtuse angle. So we have our acute angle of 46 degrees, we had a right angle right here that's 90 degrees, and now we have an obtuse angle right here. So tomorrow we're going to be using our protractors in class, and we're going to be measuring some angles, and then we're going to be classifying them. And then we're also going to be working with one of those diagrams with multiple angles, so we're going to have to know the different types of names. So bring your notes with you to class, and I will see you then. Have a good night.